Hi, today I'd like to show you a step-by-step -step process on making hooks and eyes for your clothing. But before we get started, please make sure to select thumbs up that you like the video. It helps with the algorithm. If you have any questions or comments during the video, please post them below and please click subscribe and ring that bell to be updated when new videos come out. Hooks and eyes have been around since at least the 15th century. Now, after talking with my blacksmith husband on the history of metals that could have been used for clothing, it most likely depended on where your station was as far as if you were lower class or upper class in terms of which metal you may have used for your clothing. If you were lower class, you could have used iron. That would have made your hooks and eyes look black or you could have used brass, bronze, or copper. The thing with using one of these three, brass, bronze, or copper, is over time, your clothing may have turned green. But those are cheaper metals. If you had the income to afford more quality hooks and eyes, because this isn't a consumable item, this is an item that, yes, you can use on your clothing, but then say something happens to your clothes, you can then remove the hooks and eyes, like say you have a bunch of holes on your clothes, so you can remove the hooks and eyes from the old item and transfer it to a new item. So if you had the money to afford more quality metal, then you probably would have used silver. And if you were upper nobility, most likely royalty, then you could have used gold. Although that is a very expensive metal to use on the inside of your clothing that most likely most people would not ever see. So probably silver was used instead of gold, but gold may have been used in certain circumstances. The next thing is what size metal would have been used. Well, you can go for a thicker metal. Uh, but the thing you have to remember with your wire, the thicker the metal, then the more difficult it is to move around. But just the same, because it's difficult to move around, it will hold its shape. If you go for a thinner wire, then that metal, it, it's easy to move around. You can make it into the shape you need it to be in, but depending on what you're using it for, like for example, we'll say a bodice, and you want that bodice to hold its shape. Well, if it's very thin wire, it could easily pull, and now your circle is now a funky oval shape, and it's not holding its shape very well. So you don't want your wire to be too thin or too thick. But you also have to be able to move the metal around, and that varies from person to person. For example, I asked my husband to please bring home some wire for me to do this video for you. And this is what he brought home. Like I said, he's a blacksmith. He can, well, to give you an idea, he can lift me as well as our four children all at once. He is strong. So to use copper wiring, he pulled it apart, but this is still quite thick and he might be able to move this around to make it into a hook or an eye, but I don't know that I have the muscle for that. With me, I prefer a simple wire, preferably about a half a millimeter, which is a 24 gauge wire is what I like to use. And then you have to have a tool. Me personally, I like to use my little jewelry plier here. It's a three in one. And so as you can see, I have here where I can curl the wire around in the middle. I can flatten the metal. And then right here are scissors where I can cut the wire if need be. Let me show you. So first, here is the jewelry tool that I will be using. Like I said, it's a three in one. And up here, this is where I can curl the metal around the edges. Right here in the middle is where you can flatten the metal, and then down here is where the scissors are. This is to give you an idea of what modern day hooks and eyes look like. And if you notice, these aren't exactly modern. These are probably at least maybe 30, 40 years old. It came from my great grandmother's sewing box. As you can see here, I have my wire, this is about two inches long, and for your 
hook, you want your hook to be one and three fourths up to two inches. If it's any longer than that, well, I guess it depends on what you want the hook used for, but for a simple hook like this, for a simple hook like this, you want your wire to be one and three fourths to two inches long. If you want to do an eye, a historical eye that looks similar to this, you want your wire to be one and three fourths to two inches long. However, if you want to do an eye that looks like this right here, you want your wire to be one inch long. So first I'm going to show you how to do the eye like this. It's very similar to how you would do this type of eye and I'll show you the difference here in a minute. So since I'm doing the smaller eye, this wire is too long so I need to cut it shorter. So I'm marking with my fingernail about where I want to cut it. And now I'm going to put it in the middle here and then cut. And now my wire is smaller. Now from here, I'm going to take the end of my pliers here, grab the end of the wire, and then I'm going to curve it around. This is also where the middle part comes in handy where you can squish it and flatten it as needed. There's one side done. And now I'm going to do the same with the other side and you want your two ends to curl in towards each other. So grab the end and curl it into the wire. Again, I'm going to use my middle part here to kind of squish it in and flatten it. As you can see, I now have two loops, one on either side. Now from here, I'm going to find approximately the middle of my wire and hold that in place, just like that. And now I'm going to bend either side. So this isn't exactly perfect, but it gives you a rough idea of how to do an eye. Here is the modern eye, and here is my simple eye. The difference between this eye and this eye, this wire was longer, and so where these two loops are, I was able to crisscross the wire. Let me see if I can zoom in there. I was able to crisscross the wire, and so then the loops are then tangled around each other and it helps create a circular pattern here for the eye rather than a U shape for the eye. Now to do a hook like this, you want to take your wire. This one is two inches long and you're going to take your one end and just like with the eye, you're going to grab it and twist it around and curl that little tail into place and now I'm just using the middle part here to flatten it in. So there is one side and now I'm going to take the other side and curl it in just like I did the first side. There we go. Now from here what you're going to do is you're going to find the middle of your wire which is for me right about there and I want my two loops facing up because now I'm going to take my fingers and 
push the wire oh, if I can get to hold still push the wire down and I'm going to try to connect the two sides together and as you can see I'm finding it easier to do it without the pliers now that I've got this shape so far so it looks like a very large version of the eye now I'm going to use the middle part of my pliers and squish this together so here's what it looks like now and once you have it shaped about how you want it now you are going to take the middle of your middle here the middle of your wire and now you're going if that helps to show you where I'm at right now and I'm going to curl this over there we go I have one hook done that's from the side now depending on which hook and eye I want to use I now have my hook and eye set thank you for checking out my YouTube channel if you enjoyed this video and would like to watch more of my videos please follow the links on the left hand side Remember to select thumbs up that you like the video. If you have questions or comments, please post them below. And please click subscribe and ring that bell to be updated when new videos come out.